Welcome to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to kick off the series of tutorials on Hive 2 from UHE. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with uh, familiarizing ourselves with the um, UI or user interface. There is quite a lot on the screen, but as you will see in a moment as we go through it, it is arranged in a very, very nice way. So let's start from the top where we have these uh, uh, controller bar. Um, on the top left hand side, we have the name of the synth, Hive 2. Then we have a selection for uh, uh, voice mode. So the first one is poly, so we can play multiple uh, voices together. Then we have mono, which allows you to play only one voice at a time, which will also be re-triggered. Then you have legato, which is practically like a mono, but you don't have a re-trigger re or re-triggering. And then you have duo, which you don't see much in other synth, but with duo, practically you have oscillator number one, which is playing the lowest note, and oscillator number two, which is playing the highest note. Next, you have a number of voices, up to 16, very nice. Then next, you have transposition, so you can go up uh, plus or minus 24 semitones, which is nice. And then you have a fine tuning. A fine tuning dial allows you to adjust uh, uh, by cents, up to uh, 100 cents. Next, you have this area here, which is called the data display. And this allows you to see messages, really, that are related to what you are doing, for example, on the synth when you change uh, dials position. So if you click on the middle, you can actually choose a preset and then you can also move to a previous preset or to the next preset, of course, which is in the uh, current directory. Below that, you have an indication for uh, um, MIDI. So when you click a key on the keyboard, in this case, I have a MIDI controller attached to it. You see that MIDI uh, in blue being highlighted, so it is receiving MIDI signals. Then you have a tune um, um, indicator, which uh, becomes blue when you have micro tuning active. And then on the right hand side, you also have a CPU usage, which tells you how much CPU you're using, which is, which is really good. And I'll come back to, to the data display in a moment, but there are a lot of other things that you can do. For example, you can drag and drop a preset onto the data display and it will load that. Um, you have an undo and redo with multiple times. I think it's up to 10, if I remember correctly. Then you have a button to select the preset. This one opens your uh, preset browser, really nice, with different categories, etc. I will explain how to use that uh, um, in another tutorial. Then um, you have, um, let's click again on the preset to close that. Then you have a button to save, and this is where you can save the presets and you can create your user one. If you right click on it, you can change also the uh, format of uh, that preset. And you can go, for example, from H2P, which is your standard one, to the extended one, which gives you, uh, for example, comments. Next, you have also a um, an option here called Tag These to Patch or Your Preset. And if you click on it, and I will show you that in another tutorial, but this is where you can attach your category, your feature, and character to that particular patch. Um, you have a dial to for your master output, really important. Then you have an icon here, uh, the UHE icon or logo. Click on it, and you have links to the website, to the user guides, etc., etc., and even to install some set and that you might find useful, particularly if you work in uh, with Linux. On the right hand side, you have this cogwheel um, symbol. This is where you enter um, to uh, you enter a menu to actually. Um, change the preferences like on controls, appearance, etc, etc. Okay, next, moving down, you can see it's almost um, a mirror. So on the left hand side, starting from the top, you have oscillator one, sub oscillator one, and then filter one. And as you can see on the right hand side, you have the same, but for number two, sub oscillator two, oscillator two, and then filter two, right? And um, in the middle, you have synth engine controls, which I will explain in another tutorial. And then right in the center, we have this hexagon where you can choose um, to uh, settings for weight tables, for your RPG to sequencer, your X, Y pad, your effects, and your oscilloscope. Really, really nice. You also have a button here, which is called link, which enable 
the link between the right hand side to the left hand side, which is not an absolute link, it's a relative link. Just remember that. And you see um, it is active because you see these, uh, um, these symbols L in blue. Of course, you can click on it to deactivate the linking. Moving on. Uh, below, uh, you have amplitude uh, envelope, modulation envelope, and LFO as well. And the same on the right hand side. And then below that, you have function generator 1. And again, on the right hand side, function generator 2. And then you have a shape sequencer. And you have up to 4, which is really, really nice. Below that, at the very bottom, you can select between keys. And um, which I will explain again in another tutorial. Metrics A and B. And then here in the middle, you have additional... Uh, modulation uh, sources and you can see you have this symbol like a target so you click on one and hold and then you drag on to the destination in terms of creating that link um, for modulating purposes then on the right hand side you have uh, x y one to four um, which are your custom pads okay let's uh, go back to the data display and right click on it and you can see this option called in it click on it and in this way you initialized a Patch, nice and simple. Now let's say that we want to change the cutoff here. It's so simple to create a modulation. For example, you see these symbols here, this crosshair symbol. Click and hold with your mouse, drag to the cutoff, let go, and you created uh, that connection. Now, if you play some keys, you don't uh, hear the modulation. But if you click where, where you can see the red dot, click and hold, and then you move, you can adjust the demodulation depth as it says in the display. And if you want to remove it, it's very simple. Click on it with the right button. Uh, oops, sorry, not locking, because you can lock it in terms of not changing between, as you change between different parameters. But click on it again and um, select the remove modulation LFO. And this is how easy it is to actually remove a modulation, okay, to a particular parameter. Other things to remember, you can adjust dials, of course, nice and simple, like that. And um, if you press and hold the shift key, you can do finer adjustment as well. Okay, I'm going to stop here for this first introductory uh, tutorial. And as always, see you next time. Bye.